Hello everybody, my name is meteorologist Hutch Johnson and we're going to talk about the severe weather threat across the nation today and again for tomorrow with the very latest on what you can expect. Right now, let's show you what's going on with a look at that national radar. First and foremost, we do have some showers and thunderstorms on the East Coast that are threatening now with a risk of severe weather, severe thunderstorm watch in effect there. And in Texas and the Deep South, a tornado watch has been posted by the National Weather Service. Here is a look at the storm prediction center's areas of concern. Looking into the central plains, more of a later evening, late afternoon, evening and overnight event all the way from parts of southern South Dakota through Nebraska and into parts of Kansas. Uh, the threat in yellow that you see there, that's a level two on the severe weather threat as we look into the deep south. So we have the storms just starting to fire on the radar out to the south in Texas, an ongoing convection all the way from Louisville to Charleston. Moving into the nation's capital are some stout thunderstorms right now. And where you see the orange by my hand there, that is the Richmond area, Jamestown, these areas under the risk for uh, what's called an enhanced risk or a level three out of a five level system for severe storms. Those storms are drifting out of the D.C. area and heading into portions uh, near Salisbury in Maryland and, and on down into parts of the Virginias as we head into the evening hours. And down to the south in Texas, things are really just getting fired off along the dry line there. Here is a look, though, at our risks and threats tonight a little more closely from my friends at the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma. Here's what you need to be concerned about, about risks uh, as we head through the evening and overnight hours tonight. Now, right now, the ongoing threat is along the East Coast. That's where your enhanced risk is, the slight risk back into parts of Kentucky. As we go off that marginal risk that you see here in the dark green, that means one or two storms might possibly become severe. But here is the main event heading into the late night and overnight hours. We're talking from southern South Dakota through most of central and eastern uh, Nebraska and into central Kansas, a risk for some stout to severe thunderstorms tonight that will have modes all modes of severe weather possible. Deep south along the dry line into Texas and Oklahoma, it's a slight risk of severe storms. There's all the ingredients in place in the deep south, including Tornado Alley for Oklahoma and central Texas. But we could have some better chances at convection up to the north because of cooler air loft working its way in, destabilizing the atmosphere. Here's a look at the update as far as the hail risk. This is the hail risk from the Storm Prediction Center. Where you see the hatched areas, we could have some very large hail tonight, northern and central Texas. There's a 15% chance of much of Oklahoma seeing severe storms that are capable of large hail. And here is a look at parts of Kansas and Nebraska into southern South Dakota. The hatched area means a significant risk of very large hail. And we're talking in excess of three inch diameter golf balls and softballs from the sky are possible tonight. Out to the east coast, as we look there and into the uh, the, the portions of central and northern Kentucky, the risk there is for some hail in Kentucky, a significant risk. But look at the damaging wind threat as we take a look at this for the east coast. So the storms moving into the Virginia is now going to be capable of some wind damage. Same thing goes for central parts of southern Nebraska and northern and central parts of Kansas tonight, a 30% risk from within 50 miles of any point of seeing some wind damaging storms tonight. Wind gusts in excess of 80, 80 miles per hour will be possible. And then again, there'll be another risk as we head into the day on Tuesday. I'll evaluate this a little bit more for you just in a couple of moments. But first, I do want to take a moment and share with you the fact that these storms tonight, in, if you're in these areas, could quickly become severe. All ingredients are there to produce severe weather, so it's a great time to review your safety precautions with regards to severe weather. Remember, if you are in a structure, make it a sturdy structure, a mobile home, manufactured home, or an RV, definitely not a place you want to be tonight. So have your information handy if a warning is issued for your area or if thunderstorms approach your area and you're in any part of the southern and central plains, keep that all in mind as we go through the evening hours tonight and the overnight hours as well. Now, take a look at some of these pictures from space as we check out the visible satellite imagery across the nation. And what you're going to notice on this as I center this up for you here a little bit is that we have in the deep so southern part of Texas over here, that's the dry line. So we have dry air mingling with some humid air. One of the fascinating parts about this uh, satellite imagery here is if you look into Louisiana, you see all these low level clouds drifting from south to north. Those are little puffy fair weather cumulus clouds 
That's the southerly flow straight out of the Gulf. That is what's lacing the atmosphere with moisture from the Gulf of Mexico, and it's pushing it north. Look what's going on with these clouds in the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere drifting over Texas. Those winds are coming from the southwest. So there is a lot of shear in the environment tonight. Shear is a change of wind direction with speed or height over a distance vertically or horizontally. So what we're going to see is at risk, all ingredients are there. Now, the winds at the surface start turning a little more easterly as we get into the central plains in Oklahoma, Arkansas, and up into parts of Nebraska tonight. And that will really enhance the amount of shear and spin in the atmosphere for tonight. So we have a lot of the ingredients in place. The moisture, we definitely have the shear in the environment. And take a look at this, another view from the satellite. Uh, this is not the drought update, so please, uh, ignore my header or banner up there. You can see the dry line here. The green colors and the bright white colors are those cold cloud tops and also the moisture laden air behind it. We see the yellows here and that's generally caused by dry sinking air that's on the back side of this. So that is the dry line pushing into Texas could be the trigger for a few storms tonight. But because the atmosphere is warm aloft here, the chances of storms firing off in these particular areas may be questionable. And I'll take you on a walk through that. But first, let's take a look at the forecast model for tonight. And to do that, we'll get you loaded back up over on the other side over here. And we're going to take a look at the forecast model for the southern part of Texas. And let's go to the east coast first to track the storms that are expected to be working through portions of well, look at this, this enhanced risk area, Richmond, Virginia, points north in toward Washington, D.C. Now, we already showed that we do have some showers and storms that are in this general vicinity right now. Here is a look at the model's rendition of where these storms are heading. Notice that, well, on the radar, we showed you moving quickly to the south and east. So the, this risk is primarily going to be early this evening. But notice there are going to be some more storms entering the scene from stage left through Kentucky. That risk comes later tonight. So it's it's kind of an interesting conundrum for you folks on the East Coast. We have the ongoing storms now that are ending. There's a severe thunderstorm watch in the area. Those will be blasting through. Wind damage will be the main threat from those storms, but we could get sizable hail as well. A little later tonight, as you go into Louisville, Kentucky, and on into central Kentucky, these storms will be blasting in from the west. And I'll go ahead and pause this so you can take a look on Hutch's clock up north there. As you take a look at the top, by my head, these are late night storms. These are the ones moving out of the central plains blasting through. I want you to notice a couple of things that with these particular storms, they're going to be more linear and damaging straight line winds will be more of a potent risk for you folks from Evansville all the way into Louisville, Kentucky. Now let's check out the forecast models for the deep south. A couple of things to take note of here. Number one is that as we go through the afternoon today, as we set this into motion, we're going to get some initiation in Texas. These storms, these initial storms will have that risk for spin. There is a lot of spin in the atmosphere that I'll detail moment as we look at the model guidance in Texas, but we're not going to see widespread con convection possibly. And the main reason for that is what we call a cap in the upper atmospheres. Uh, temperatures are so warm that a buoyant rising parcel of air has very difficult time punching through a more stable layer above it. But where we have cooler air mixing in a lot, notice Denver, that's snow in the mountains to the west of Denver, Colorado in the mile high city. As we take a look though, in the central plains here, that orange areas where we're going to see that enhanced risk of severe storms tonight and we will have spin and shear in the atmosphere. Notice heavy rain in portions of the Black Hills in South Dakota and as we push the time forward now you're looking at midnight central time. Here we go. Things really take off. So this is more of a late evening event say after dinner in Kansas in southern Nebraska and on into Texas and Oklahoma City as well. These isolated storms on the onset will be capable of very large hail. And then as we zoom in to this area that's impacted here, notice in parts of Kansas and southern parts of Nebraska as we see these storms, there's this backward C shape here. Oof, that happens a lot of times when we get well, downdraft winds burping out of storms, straight line wind damage. That wind will likely be coming out of the west or northwest from this line of storms. As we go into the deep hours of the overnight, notice it says, well, 3 a.m. on the old clock here on this forecast model. Taking you through the overnight, look at the snow out in the mountains of Colorado and Lincoln, Nebraska. The storms are time to move through your area somewhere around five in the morning. But Hutch cautions you, when these events begin, they can often accelerate because those downdraft winds that will be pushing through 
places like Kearney, Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska, can accelerate these storms so the actual thunderstorm cells could be traveling at a very healthy clip of 50 to 70 miles per hour, riding those gust fronts straight into the nation's midsection and the heartland. So Lincoln, Beatrice, Nebraska, if you know where that is, Hutch has been there. How about good old Omaha? That's right. These storms will be happening as we go through the overnight and into the morning hours. Norfolk all the way up into the portions of Sioux City, Iowa, and looking even farther north, Sioux City, Iowa could still see some windy thunderstorms, and there is a risk for a few strong to severe storms as we go through the overnight. South of the I-90 corridor in South Dakota is where the best risk or chance will be for this type of activity. So now you've taken a look at the timing of these storms as they work their way through the region. Looking at the far northern plains, it's just good old-fashioned rain here in the northern plains and parts of northern South Dakota and much of North Dakota, where as we go into Tuesday, the rain chance will begin. And that could very well have some impact on the drought here in our area. So that is a look at your forecast. But I do want to highlight just a couple of things. Let's take a look at some of the spin in the atmosphere with a real high-resolution look at a model here. And I'll point that out as we take a look at this severe tracker. And what we're going to do is track a couple of things. Number one, I want the national view here. And we're going to show you out to the East Coast as we go through the evening hours tonight. As I load up the most recent model, I beg your forgiveness there. It takes just a little bit of time. Here we go. The storms tonight really uh, are not going to be low impact. But you see they're not very widespread moving through portions of the nation's capital in Virginia. And overnight, here we go. Storm system fires in the central plains. There's, look at that. You don't see much in the way of any thunderstorms at all in the deep south part of Texas. The model says that the, well, the inhibition in the atmosphere is just a little bit too much. So the best chance at these storms really expanding in aerial coverage and strength in the evening and overnight hours will be in Kansas, in Nebraska, and South Dakota. These will push into Iowa, by the way, western Iowa, a fair chance as you go into places like Atlantic and Sioux City of seeing some early morning thunderstorms as you go into your day. So keep that in mind as we go into your Tuesday as well. So there is a look at that activity. Now we're going to zoom in and I want to take a look at something called the uh, tornado parameters, and we'll take a look at where that spin is the greatest. And I'm going way down into the heart of Texas here, and I'm going to load this up. And this is an interesting thing to look at. That Sometimes we can have all of the ingredients for the uh, tornadoes and spin in the atmosphere, but you need thunderstorms for, for that to happen. So check out Texas and Oklahoma. All of these colors you see here showing that the ingredients for spin in the atmosphere is very, very good in the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas. But the storms not expected to fire off as much. As I switch this over to a radar product, you can see that uh, essentially you got to have the thunderstorms there to produce that upsidence and the vertical motion in the atmosphere. So here's a look at the reflectivity from the radar expected by this model, and they just aren't firing where all that spin is the greatest. So that's one thing to point out. Now let's get you to where things are expected to happen, and that is right here in portions of the nation's gut, right in the heartland of the United States. Let's go ahead and see if I can get that. Okay, there we go. Load it on up into parts of Kansas. Now we're going to look at this same future radar and you'll see the storms here blossoming through parts of Kansas and Nebraska, southern South Dakota, right where we have that anticipation for some severe weather. And here is a look then at that tornado parameter in these areas. It is a little bit lower, but there is a significant risk tonight of some of these storms. And here is where you see the optimal time for the spin in the atmosphere. As we go from about eight this evening into the early overnight hours. And then after that, we're likely to see, well, if you look into Kansas, quite a bit in the southern half of Kansas as we look down south of Topeka and, and heading into parts of western uh, Missouri and eastern Kansas as we go through the night. And heading towards Lincoln by six in the morning, there could be that spin in the atmosphere in your area as well. So the risk for overnight or nocturnal tornadoes is absolutely there. And when we take a look at the... Um, 
pardon me, the, the supercell composite. This is where the ingredients are there for supercell thunderstorms. These will be capable of persisting through the overnight hours. And one of the main ingredients for one of, uh, for this type of a setup is what we call a low level jet, this inflow of moisture into the storm. We lose the heating of the day in the overnight hours, but a low level jet stream that continues the conveyor of moisture from the Gulf Coast can fuel these thunderstorms all night long. So here we go through the overnight we go and into morning and the main risk for stout and well convective activity that will be able to be fueled through the overnight hours by this low level jet will be as we look into the Missouri River Valley, as we look into places like Lincoln, uh, Omaha and down into parts of Western Missouri, not far from Kansas City. So that is a look at that. And again, I promise this, we'll take one more look at the risk for severe storms as we go into your day for tomorrow. So this is Tuesday, the risk shifts east. There is a significant risk for tornadic activity tomorrow in parts of central and eastern Iowa and northeast and north central Missouri, Kirksville, Missouri, Ottumwa, Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, on in toward the Quad Cities, all in an enhanced risk for some convective activity tomorrow. And this is the risk of tornadoes tomorrow and that out outlook is for a hatched area or a significant risk the tornadoes again tomorrow could be strong folks all right my name is meteorologist hutch johnson i really appreciate your likes and your comments down below let me know where you're watching from and i'll post a link to some of my fun videos here because you can learn a little bit more about me if you've never seen me before i'm a meteorologist with 30 years of experience i have been on the air for 26 of those years i've taught in the college classroom for the better part of 20 years as well i love your comments i hope you've enjoyed the video if so give me a like well, you can hit the subscription down below and make sure you hit the notification so you know when Hutch has something new for you to check out.